Welcome to lecture 23 of financial management and in this lecture we are going to start a new concept or new topic of cost of capital. Moving towards the contents, in this video we are going to understand what cost of capital is or we have an idea of what capital is. But to acquire that capital, there is some cost that we need to bear, that a firm need to bear. So we are going to understand what that cost of capital is. And we know that capital is divided between equity and debt. So this, if capital is divided into these two parts, then obviously the cost of capital is also divided into these two parts that is the cost of equity and the cost of debt. So there would be a cost of acquiring equity and there will be cost of acquiring debt. And then we are going to understand the concept of VAC which is uh, called a weighted average cost of capital. So it is a technique that is used to find uh, cost of capital. But before that, let me start this with an example. Let's say Said Book Bank, uh, they want to buy a new coding machine that would help control the book inventory. So we know that Said Book Bank is a uh, bookshop and uh, they, <coughs> they sell books, whether that is related to um, any area of uh, interest. So, so what they do is they, they have lots of books and they, they code those books. They have an online system where they, they, they maintain the record of those books. And for that, each book need to be coded. There would be special code that would be written on that book. And when you scan that book uh, over the scanner, it would give you detail of that book. So for that, they would need a coding machine that would code and encode the. Uh, so, so they need this this coding method to control the book inventory to know which book is where, how many stock do we have of a particular book, and kind of a detail. So it is an inventory management system. For for this inventory management system or for this machine, they would have to spend one uh, lakh rupees. Uh, this would be the cost, this would be the cash flow, this would be the initial cash flow, initial investment. They know that once they invest, this uh, machine would have a useful life of 5 years and would have a salvage value of 4000. So uh, at the end of the useful life, this machine would, would have a sales value of 4000 salvage or value of 4000 and its useful life would be 5. The annual cash saving from the purchase of the machine will be 10,000. So each year they would save 10,000. So this is kind of 10,000 cash inflow. You can consider it a positive cash flow. This 4000 would also be ca positive cash flow at the end of year 5. Should Said Book Bank buy this machine? So obviously, uh, from this question, you know that it is a capital budgeting question. We first need to find, uh, use some technique. Let's say we use NPV, which is capital budgeting technique, which would help us make the decision whether we should buy this uh, machine or not. For NPV, what we have, we have a cash outflow at year zero of 1 lakh rupees. Then we would have at year one a cash inflow. This would be saving, but let's consider it cash inflow. Uh, savings are also cash inflows of 10,000. Year two, again, we would have 10,000. Year three would be 10,000. Year four, again, would be 10,000. At year five, we would have 10,000 cash inflows plus this machine would expire and we would we would scrap it out and scrap value would be 4000 so we would get 14000 so now you have these cash flows what you can do is you can find the npv of these cash flows right okay 
So if NPV is positive, we accept the project. If NPV is negative, we reject the project. But how uh, before finding the NPV, the formula of NPV is we know that it is uh, NPV is equal to the present value of uh, cash inflows minus present value of cash outflows. So to find present value of cash inflow, what do we do is we take the future value, say we need to find the present value of this 10,000. So we would take 10,000 divided by 1 plus r raised to power n. Okay. So where would this future value come in real life? I mean, uh, in, in book questions, you have been given the values. But in real life, where would these values come from? So these cash flows would be estimated. An expert would estimate this. We, our financial management would, uh, managers would estimate this. And then there is a chapter on this one, uh, cash to estimation, which we would not cover in this uh, course, in the course of financial management, but probably would cover it in corporate finance subject. So these cash flows are estimated. We would find out how these cash flows come. We, uh, we know uh, N because either the cash flow would occur at one year, two year, three year or so on and so forth. But where would in real life this R come from? What is this R? How do you find R? We have given different names to this R. We, we sometimes call it, it uh, discount rate. We call it a required rate of return. And sometimes we call it cost of capital. They all uh, are different names used for this R. When we say required rate of return, it is from the perspective of the investor. Investor requires this return on his investment. So this required rate of return becomes the cost for the company, cost of capital. Because that capital had been acquired from the investor. So this, so this cost is from the company's perspective and return is from the investor's perspective, right? This whole chapter, this chapter of cost of capital is to find out how we can get the value of R, how this value of R is estimated. In book questions, we had been given the value of R, but in real life, how do you find this value of R? And so we are, uh, what we are going to understand is how to find this cost of capital or required of return. They both are similar, right? So either we say that finding required of return, required rate of return, or finding cost of capital. They, they, they both are similar concepts. So starting with cost of capital. First thing, what is capital? Anything that we employ in the business or we use to buy assets. How do we buy assets? We buy it uh, either using uh, owner's equity or simply equity or we buy it using debt. So to buy these assets, so if we need to install a factory, uh, we need to generate funds and those funds would either uh, come from equity or from debt. Right. So, so capital is basically divided into two parts. It is divided into equity and it is divided into debt. So if capital is divided into equity and debt, so obviously this capital would have some cost attached to it. To generate this capital, we would have to bear some cost. Again, this cost would come from two aspects. Either would be cost of debt or cost of equity. So in previous example, if we saw that a Said Book Bank needed 1 lakh rupees to, to buy that machinery. Either that 1 lakh rupees would come from equity or it would come from debt or from both. If it comes from both, say 60% uh, of this 1 lakh rupees comes from debt and the remaining 40% of this 1 lakh rupees comes from equity. Then uh, we uh, the sixty percent would be sixty thousand and forty percent would be forty thousand. So if we add them up, we get our total capital. So total capital would be uh, equity plus debt. Is that right? So this co total capital would be equity 
40,000 and debt, 60,000, it would be 1 lakh rupees. That's fine. Okay. Okay, if we acquire this, uh, this debt, let's say we get this debt from bank, we take a loan from bank, that bank would charge us a 10% interest rate. So, this 10% would be the cost of acquiring this debt, of getting this 60,000 from, uh, from, uh, from debt, generating this capital from debt. This would be the cost of debt, the CD. <laughs> okay. For this 40,000, we need to pay some dividend to our shareholders and say this is preferred shareholders or whatever the case may be. Uh, we need to give 5% to our equity holders. So, this uh, this 5% will be the cost of acquiring this 40,000 capital of this 40,000 equity. So, this would become our cost of equity. So, now we know capital would be equal to uh, equity plus debt that is 60,000 is debt and 40,000 is equity. So, this would be total capital. But what would be the cost of capital equal to? Now, you would say that cost of equity would be equal to cost of debt plus cost of equity that would be 15% but that is an uh, incorrect approach. Why? Because there is some weight attached to this uh, debt and some weight attached to equity. So, instead of uh, finding this, uh, adding these, these up, what we need to do is, or finding the simple average, one other approach can be finding the average. So, you would rather say that 10 plus 5 divided by 2, this would give us 7.5%. This again would be a, a wrong approach because we are missing the weight part. So, instead of finding the average, what we do is we find the weighted average from your statistics scores, you would remember that there was a mean and then there was a weighted average. Uh, in weighted average, you simply multiply the weight by the, the value and then you add them up. Right? So, the similar concept we are going to apply here. So, instead of finding the average of these costs, cost of debt and cost of equity, we are going to find the weighted average of cost of capital. So, so here the concept of VAC would uh, would come. So, uh, so you would have understood that what VAC means. It means weighted average cost of capital. So, instead of adding them up or finding the simple average, what we do is we find the weighted average. So, by finding the weighted average, it would become the weighted average cost of capital. Okay. Uh, so, VAC, weighted average cost of capital, what would be the formula? Weight of debt multiplied by cost of debt plus weight of preferred stock multiplied by cost of preferred stock plus weight of equity multiplied by cost of equity, uh, cost of common stock. So, now you would say if we do not have preferred stock, then its weight would become 0. So, if its uh, cost of 5 percent, it does not matter by multiplying them, it would again become 0. You would say what if we have only taken debt, if sales book bank rather than taking uh, equity of 40,000 and debt of 60,000, rather they take the uh, debt of 1 lakh rupees, the loan of 1 lakh rupees, then what would happen? Then again, the weight of uh, equity would be 0 because there is no, I mean, there is 0 percentage of uh, equity. So, no matter what percentage of cost of equity is, the this part would be uh, 0 and this part would be 0. So, we would have only this aspect. The point is that uh, we multiply the weight of the that specific item by its cost. So, in previous example, the cost of uh, the weight of debt was 60 percent, 0 0.60. The cost of debt was uh, 10 percent, 0.10 plus uh, weight of preferred stock was 0 multiplied by cost, does not matter, this whole becomes 0 plus a weight of equity was 0.4, 40%, 40,000 rupees was equity and its cost was 0.05 or 5%. So, the uh, 
solution would become 0 0.60 into 0 0.10. This would be 0 0.06 plus 0 0.4 into 0 0.05. This would become 0 0.02. If we add them up, then we get 0 0.08 or 8%. So, our cost of capital, the weighted average cost of capital is 8%. So, remember if we take average, simple average, then it turned out to be 7.5%, which is wrong. The actual cost that we are bearing on this 1 lakh rupees, of acquiring this 1 lakh rupees is 8%. So, this is our cost of uh, capital. Now, the issue is, we can find the weight. How do we find the weight? If we need 1 lakh rupees, we know that 60,000 are coming from debt and the rest 40,000 are coming from equity. So, we can simply find the weight by dividing 60,000 uh, from the total amount. So, we get the weight of 60% or 0.6 and the similar is the case here. So, we know how to find the weight right all the weights can be found but how do you find cost of debt i mean in real life scenario again in previous example the 10 percent had been given in the book we have hypothesized that uh, that percentage but if we wanted to find this cost of debt in uh, real time or this cost of profit in real time or this cost of equity in real time then what we do how do we find these uh, these costs so, in, in next uh, slides, we are going to discover, we are going to understand how to calculate cost of debt, how to estimate cost of debt, how to estimate cost of profit stock and then how to estimate cost of equity. And then once we have estimated all these three items, then we are simply going to input uh, these estimations into this formula and it would give us the weighted average uh, cost of uh, capital. <coughs> okay, just to give you an idea. Cost of equity, first we would uh, find out cost of equity. In previous uh, chapters, we discussed a chapter of bond valuation, where we saw the model of dividend discount model, which we call DDM or dividend growth model or Gordon growth model. They, they all are same in case of sorry, uh, stock valuation, in chapter of stock valuation. So, we are going to use this model, this dividend discount model to find the cost of equity. This is one model that can be used. Then there is another approach which is uh, somewhat advanced approach than dividend discount model which is called capital asset pricing model. I repeat again, capital asset pricing model. Uh, in short, it is called CAPM. So, we are going to use these two approaches to find cost of equity, right? So, in, in essence, if you have not understood the, if you have not watched the videos of, uh, or if you have forgot the, the concept of stock valuation, then I recommend that you go back and uh, understand the concept of stock valuation and then you, you would be able to grasp the idea of uh, cost of equity. So, in next video, first we are going to understand cost of equity and then we are going to explore the the other uh, costs.